set this up to do a little recording here. And we're going live. So good morning, good morning, good morning. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's time for a little story time this morning with me, your host, Sunny D. Thanks for being here. Uh, thank you guys for hanging. Uh, got a lot of got a lot of fun stuff to share with you this morning. Just checking and making sure our stream is live, making sure everything's looking good on the live side. Got the podcast going on. What's going on, podcast? Got uh, let's go with a little Instagram, little Instagram live going on. So we've got that happening. Um, we've got. You know, I'm, I'm learning a lot about technology here, probably way more than I ever wanted to know, uh, but it's all good because what we're figuring out is that technology is awesome when it works. Um, technology is uh, a pain in the ass when it doesn't work. Um, so we did a, an event last night. For those of you guys who joined, I don't know if you were there. Uh, from Storytime, um, any of the crew that came over, we launched our online store, pmtakehome.com, last night. Had a huge, you know, launch party. We're, we're working on it for the last couple of weeks, um, testing, you know, the different kinks and our plan, you know, using Zoom and then um, broadcasting that live stream from Zoom onto all of our Facebook pages. Well, the prelims, I mean, it kind of worked out. The pre during the prelims, we were able to broadcast. Uh, we did a couple of promos, and I mean, as far as I know, it was working out. Uh, the challenge is when we went for <laughs> went for score, as they say, um, when we went for it on the record, uh, then we started running to some issues with Zoom and it, it dropping and things not, you know, not hanging on. So I was, you know, I was like troubleshooting the problem right up until go time, as we had planned to start our you know, our party 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, I had my co-host Josh in Texas. We had, I mean, cameras, you know, all over the place, like different streams and different product shots. Um, everything was looking good. And then we started having that issue. So I started troubleshooting, trying to figure out what was going on. And it just, you know, kept on crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing. Um, so right now I'm streaming and I'm trying it again with to the Facebook pages and hopefully the stream hangs on. I'm just trying to figure out a workaround, but you want to talk about, you know, I don't got much hair, but you want to talk about pulling your hair out. It was, it was something else. Um, I love the, the technology, the ability to be able to come to you guys direct the the, uh, the ability to be able to, you know, hop on these streams, but Oh my goodness. Uh, we had some things happening. I mean, we stuck with it. You know, I kept relaunching the stream like every three, four minutes just to try to get it to work. Um, Josh was Josh was a trooper through the whole thing. I mean, he had an amazing setup. He had, you know, he was doing audio, had the wireless mics going on, um, way fancier than what I had going on. Um, but we we had a, we had a good time, you know, working through these technical difficulties. Um, it, it's you know, it's one of those things if you're getting ready to. Um, start working on your online um, store, your your online presence, starting to do a show. I mean, you just got to try, right? You just got to try. You know, I was joking around yesterday. I was like, hey, dude, I was like, we're, uh, we're entrepreneur, um, um, entrepreneurs now. Did you ever think that, you know, when you were in beauty school, that you were going to be, um, that you were going to be working through online versus working behind the chair and doing someone's hair? Like, I never thought that. I mean, I thought when I went to beauty school, I would always be in the salon. Um, but then a month ago, a little over a month ago, you know, we found ourselves um, in a whole new experience where we're not able to go. All of our salons are closed um, across two different states. Um, we haven't been in the salon over a month. Um, so we are now, you know, trying to get nimble and uh, starting new projects and trying new things. And that's really what story time is. Story time came, uh, came to birth from just an idea I had a long time ago when I wrote you know, my first book, I started thinking, I was like, yeah, I'd like to do, um, I grew up with uh, Mr. Rogers, you know, Mr. Rogers in the neighborhood, you know, the beautiful day in the neighborhood. 
uh, Tom Hanks just did a, a reincarnation of Mr. Rogers, but that was like the era when, you know, Mr. Rogers would come on and he, you know, he'd sit down and he'd kind of read some stories and teach some lessons and stuff like that. So I kind of, that was like a little bit of the inspiration for starting story time where I would sit down, you know, kind of go through some of the stories and some of the lessons and just share with, with my community. And that's how it started. So, excuse me, I thought about it um, when I finished writing my first book, which is your first year in um, the beauty industry, how to not just survive, but thrive in the business of beauty. Um, started that project several years back <clears throat> and started thinking about, you know, this story time concept. Um, but like a lot of things that we think about and a lot of things that we want to do, things get put on the back burner for whatever reason things get put on the back burner. So that was an idea that got put on the back burner for years. Um, you know, time, you know, all the excuses you can make up, time, money, resources, um, studio, setup, where to begin, how to, you know, how to go about it, you know, all these different things, format, all these different things. Um, what it really came down to is just doing it. Um, you guys know if you've been hanging with me for story time, this is our 11th episode. So if you've been hanging with me for 11 episodes, then you know, uh, you know my motto that I've, I've taken on. I mean, it wasn't my motto always. It wasn't my motto, you know, even a, you know, a few short years ago. Um, but it's a new motto that, that uh, I adopted. Um, I've got it on my screensaver. I'm going to see if I can find it for you guys. I showed it to you, showed it to a lot of you guys uh, in, the, in the probably first or second episode. Um, but it's on my screensaver for a reason, um, because every time, you know how much we look at our phones, right? You got screen time, you can check it out. Um, but looking at your phone, uh, being able to get a little friendly reminder, you know, when you're starting to hesitate, because that's a big thing. We all do it. You know, we hesitate. We hesitate for a lot of different reasons. We hesitate doing things um, that we not only should do or could do, but doing things that we ought to do because those things are gonna help us out. Those things are gonna benefit us in, in a positive way. But, you know, we make, we're great at making up excuses as to why something A won't work or as to why, you know, we cannot do something. Um, so that's just kind of what we do as humans. Um, so I put the screensaver on my phone. So whenever I was kind of in that mode of, you know, hesitation, and I mean, why do we hesitate? Let's talk about that for a second. You know, why do we hesitate in the first place? I think it's on my other phone, I'm gonna grab it. Um, I'm gonna keep talking though. Um, we hesitate in the first place because there's probably some kind of fear, right? There's probably some kind of fear factor. There's probably some kind of uh, fear, something that's holding us back. And when you think about fear, when you think about what fear is, um, wh why it creeps in and why it grabs hold of us. Uh, the acronym FEAR, which is a, a little acronym. I may have shared it with some of you guys before, but the acronym FEAR, you know, is a false evidence appearing real. You know, so and it may come from the past, right? It may have been, you know, something happened or something didn't work out for you before. So then we carry that forward into a lot of other things we do. Um, I do it. You know, I'm sure a lot of you do it. I'm sure a lot of people watching and listening do it. Um, but we carry it forward into what we're currently doing. Um, and we carry it forward for a lot of reasons. You know, we carry it forward because it's just heavy, heavy, heavy baggage um, that's been with us forever. We carry it forward because we don't know where to put it or we don't know how to put it down. Um, we carry it forward for a lot of different reasons. But... Fear, if you think about fear, false evidence appearing real. Um, so that's one of the things I want to, I want you to, when you're, <clears throat> when you're uh, faced with the next challenge, right? This is just one of many, um, just so you know. Um, I'm not, you know, I haven't been here forever on earth, but I can tell you one thing that's for sure is that these challenges, um, they come in waves, they come in cycles, they come in series. So this is just one of many. There will be more, <clears throat> there will be um, different types, there will be different, um, different, it will look different. It might not all look like, you know, like the, uh, the Corona virus. I think I've got a, 
Let me see if I've got a um, little visual for you. So the one that we're dealing with right now, how does it look, right? This little challenge that we have going on. Um, it looks a little different. You know, the ones I shared, you know, with you guys going back all the way to 1917, um, we've been dealing with these different things. This is the one right now, right? This is the corona economy. This is the corona, you know, virus. If you guys are on Instagram, you can't see the screen because I got a green screen behind me. But if you're on Facebook, for all you people that are on Facebook, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But let me show you guys. I don't want to leave you guys in the dark here. Um, so this is this is a screen. So right behind me, I've got a little little corona uh, corona. I guess that would be is that the virus, the the makeup, the genetic makeup of what it looks like. So that's the coronavirus that started the corona economy. That's what we're kind of experiencing right now. Um, that's what we're going through right now. Um, that's, that's where, when you think about the um, current state of the union, how things look, um, it's just one of the many things that over time, over life, over um, the course of your life, the course of your, your children's life, it's just one of many things we're going to have to deal with, guys. Um, it's not going to be, you know, no one's really going to get a pass and, and just go through life and never have to deal with anything. Now, if that did happen, you know, if that happened where you went through and, and you missed out on all the different opportunities, you missed out on all the different ways that you could experience, um, experience this, this world, um, then that would be sad. That would be kind of tragic. That would be pretty sad to be able to get to the end of the road. You know, one of our, my mentors says, you know, a lot of people just, they tip to, they, they try to tiptoe um, to get through life and to arrive only at their grave unscathed. Um, and then another one of my mentors says, that's no way to live. You know, the way to live is to come in, you know, at a hundred miles an hour sideways with your hair on fire. Like, man, um, what a trip, right? And so think about those two perspectives. Are you going to tiptoe your way through life to safely make it to the grave? I mean, what is that? You know, what does that look like? Is that going to be the life that you've always dreamed of? Is that going to be um, the life that you've always wanted? I don't think so. I think when you look back, you're going to want to, and you're not going to be upset about, you know, those challenges, like the things that we're dealing with, like right now, you know, in the corona economy, these challenges not going to be so upset about those things. Um, but what you're going to be, hopefully, is you're going to be impressed by the way that you handled it. You're going to be impressed by, you know, by your resolve, your ability to rise up to the occasion. Um, and I talked a lot about this as I was reading through, you know, the last several episodes, just about when you have your grandkids and they're sitting on your lap. And they're looking at you and they're like, hey, you know, grandma, hey, uh, you know, grandpa, what's the deal? We heard about this in school today back in 2020. We heard about something called the coronavirus. Um, what's the deal? Like, were you, were you, were you alive during that? And your, your old crusty ass is sitting there. You're going to be like, yeah, you know, I was alive during then. And then they're going to be like, so what was it like? Tell me, like, tell me the real deal. Because, you know, they're going to be reading in some kind of textbook. And, you know, it's not going to be a physical one. It's not even probably going to be on an iPad. It's probably going to be some crazy digital thing with a, you know, a contact lens and the field of, you know, view is just filled with the pages and the words or the videos. I mean, it's going to be a trip, but that's when you, you know, crusty you, right? 50, 60 years from now, crusty you is going to be able to pull out uh, one of these devices, You'll be able to pull out an iPhone. You're gonna be like, "Oh, what's that?" Because <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it doesn't exist anymore. You're gonna pull it out. And you're gonna be like, well, "Let me show you, Sonny." And you're gonna have them sit on your lap, and you're gonna take them, you know, into your album, and you're gonna pull up some pictures, you know, and you're gonna pull up some videos. Um, what are those pictures and videos gonna look like? Um, what are those pictures and videos gonna say? You know, so when you when you think about it, those pictures and videos, when you have your grandkids sitting on your lap and you're trying to explain to them that back in this day, you know, that they're now learning about in school, 
uh, the coronavirus and how it, you know, how it impacted um, you and how it impacted your family and what it was like, um, you're going to want to have, hopefully, um, some stories that you can share with them that, you know, not only will bring some excitement into their lives and hope, right, and optimism, but also maybe will rekindle a fire in your old crusty ass as you're sitting there. Um, so that's the thing, but it's not going to happen if you're not willing to take some chances. It's not going to happen if you're not willing to, you know, to put yourself in, in the proverbial harm's way. Um, being that, you know, that's how you get the most out of life. So when you think about this thing called fear, when you think about what fear stands for, false evidence appearing real, you know, what false evidence are you looking at right now? You know, when I did my first haircut, which I, I talked a little bit about on, I think, the sec first or second episode, and I, like, cut my damn finger off, you know, didn't even get to finish the girl's hair. Um, that was, that in my head, when that happened, that was the world telling me, you chose the wrong industry. Um, you're involved in the wrong field. Like, you, you got no business trying to become whatever you think you're going to become. You are not cut out for this. That was what I thought the world was telling me, like, pack up your shit, like, give them back the kit and get your ass out of Florida, right? Because you moved here to try to go to hair school and try to become a hairstylist and you just almost lost your damn finger. Now what? Um, so that was what I thought was the world saying to me, big mistake, bad choice, um, but what it was, was that was the fear taking the interpretation of the way I was, what I was looking at and make, giving it its own little meaning. And the fear messes with you because the fear starts telling you those things. Uh, but here's what happens, guys. Sometimes you start to believe it. Um, sometimes you start to believe your own BS. Um, sometimes you start to believe things that you make up inside of your own head um, that are complete and utter bullshit, but you start to believe them. Um, so what happens when that happens, right? Um, what happens when you start to believe that that's, you know, that's your reality, that that's what's going on? Um, so you're in story time right now. Um, hopefully you guys are excited to be here. Um, this is just, just a, little, a little opening as I'm sharing with you guys. I'm trying to see if I can get this picture on the, oh, man, I don't know if you can zoom in like that. Let's zoom out. Whoa, yeah, look at that. Um, but that's cool. I didn't need to do that. So story time. That's cool. Just playing with some of the features over here. On, you guys are like, what? Playing with some of the features over here on Instagram. Didn't know you could do all that. So this is story time. I just got a close up. I hope I didn't have any booger sticking out. I hope you guys can see that. You know, you see this, right? You see this. You would never know what's going on in there. So that's a little little mascara. I've been trying to, you know, tell you guys. You get. There's things you could do, trust me. I know you don't want to have your grays coming out. You don't want to have your roots popping out. You don't want to be looking crusty. Um, I know, trust me, we're all home. We're all looking rough. You know, I saw, I saw DJ Khaled the other day. Go check out his Instagram. I was like, damn, homie. And you know, he's usually got like the tightest edge up, line up, fade, beard. I mean, he was looking like, I don't know, he's looking like a terrorist. Yeah, I saw him, I was like, damn, oh, what happened? Um, but, you know, you know, I, I gave him props, though. I mean, he was all natural, but he's, he's hanging in there because he's not able to get his, you know, get his barber to tighten him up. Um, so we've all got to do um, what we got to do right now just to kind of hang tough, um, you know, stay at home, stay safe, and hopefully we can get through this as quick as possible. Um, but... I just want you to be thinking about that. You know, that's my, my opening for today, um, for story time. Um, just how are you dealing with the fear? Are you taking chances? Um, healthy chances, right? But are you taking some chances in life? I mean, pre-coronavirus, were there things that, you know, you wish you were doing that you didn't do? And now you've had some time to think about those things. So, so now you're like, yeah, you know, I was kind of bullshitting on this or that or putting this off or that off. Well, now you got nothing but time. Right. So like story time, I wanted to do this for years. Um, now I got nothing but time. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start doing story time and figuring it out as I go. Um, doing our, our online store, something, you know, a couple of years ago I was talking about. Um, we never did it. Um, now it's like, boom, Corona hits. 
zero incomes are flowing. Um, so what can we do? So we launched pmtakehome.com, um, took it to even another level. We extended that, um, that, that, uh, that work that we did on that website. We extended it out. We created a program. It's called the pmtakehome.com VIP program. It's, I mean, if you go to pmtakehome.com, you'll see our store. But if you go to PM Take Home VIP, that's for stylists, barbers, beauty professionals, salon owners. Um, so they can jump on, you know, on, on the PM Take Home train and be able to earn some cash like every single day. Um, not like, you know, like you literally, you send, you know, you, you sign up, you send your guests there. Um, we do the marketing, the branding, the promoting, um, the shipping, the packing. We do it all. And then we pay out stylists and beauty pros commissions on that. I mean, that was something I thought about also, you know, doing, and now we're able to do it. Um, so that's a, and then it pays out daily. So right now, if you're kind of in between a rock and a hard place, right, you're walking out to your mailbox every day, you're like opening up, is my stimulus check in there? <laughs> it ain't there, right? And you're like, ah, oh, where's my, I need some money, right? You could be, and you have guests out there. I'll tell you what, people are still shampooing, conditioning, and styling their hair, even if they're at home. Um, so those are essentials. Um, so rather than going out to the store and buying some garbage or, or trying to find it somewhere else, um, you could be their stylist. You could be their professional and say, hey, you know, boom, you go to, you know, you go to this website and here's my, my name or whatever. Here's my promo code. Um, they get to save money on it and it gets shipped right to their door and you get paid like every day. So, I mean, that's something that we wanted to do. Um, and now it's live, you know, so there's, there's little things like we've been putting it off. I've been putting it off, but I want you to be thinking about that. Like, as you're going through your own experience in this Corona economy, you're going through your own, you're dealing with your own kind of challenges and all that. What does, what is some of the ways, what are some of the things, what are some of the um, things that you wanted to do? You talked about doing, but you haven't done. Um, and how are you going to be different after this? You know, hopefully, you know, our economy and everything gets to open back up soon. But you will be different uh, one way or the other. Nobody, not you, not you, uh, nobody's not me. Nobody's coming out of this experience the same, right? You know, you got kids, you've been homeschooling. Now you become a teacher. Like, oh, my God, I don't know what's going on. You got a family. You're, like, ready to choke somebody because you've been around them so much. You've got, you know, you've got your businesses that were there that won't be there after this. You got new businesses that are emerging that are going to be there after this. It's going to be a whole different world. It's just fundamentally um, going to be change. And then how are you going to embrace that change? How are you going to step into that change and say, you know what? Um, I didn't know my, my industry was a non-essential. What if, what if something like this happens? You know, am I prepared you know, I'm looking out the window right now. It's about the you know, storm outside. I'm thinking, am I prepared for the storm, right? Am I prepared for what could come? Because the time to figure out that you don't know how to pilot or fly a plane isn't when the plane is 30,000 feet up in the air. Because that's, you know, when the plane's 30,000 feet you know, up in the air, you know, you're kind of shit out of luck at that point. So the time to figure out that you don't know how to fly a plane is before the plane takes off, before the plane is 30,000 feet in the air and there's some mechanical difficulties that are, you know, popping up, right? Before, before all of a sudden, you know, your, your pilot's passed out at the wheel and you got to take over. And so you want to be able to <laughs> troubleshoot, <clears throat> be able to figure these things out ahead of time. Um, so that's, um, that's my opening. So the last, 10 episodes I was going through your first year in the beauty industry, how to not just survive, but thrive in the business of beauty. Um, now I'm going to jump into um, your first year in salon ownership. Um, so your first year in salon ownership is the second book in the series. And it's exactly that. It's, it's taking you into that first year in ownership. Now it says salon ownership. Um, it could just say your first year in ownership period. Um, ownership to me, it starts with a mentality. Ownership to me, it starts really with like how you show up. Even if you're working in someone's salon or you're working in someone's company right now, how do you show up there? Do you show up looking like an owner? Do you show up walking like an owner, talking like an owner? Do you show up thinking like an owner? 
So ownership really for me, um, it is just that. It's, it's a big part of it is mentality. A big part of it is how you show up. You know, I remember when I was working full time in the Paul Mitchell school and I had, you know, several guests say to me over, you know, periods of time, like, are you the owner? And I took that as a compliment because I was trying to conduct myself and carry myself like, yeah, I was given off that vibe. Um, so I took that as a compliment. But how do you show up when you show up to the place that you work at? When you show up, when we get to open back up and you get to show up again, how are you going to show up? Um, so I'm going to start this, you know, this book. I'm going to go into the, the preface or the preface, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to read that. I'm, I'm going to get into the introduction um, today. That's going to be what we cover. And then, you know, we'll start bouncing around over the next week of different chapters. You know, I'll kind of bounce around. If there's a chapter, if you have this uh, book already and you know there's like certain chapters you either want some you know, more insight on or you want me to focus on, um, you can definitely, you know, let me know in the comments or pick a chapter. Um, I'm going to tell you what all the chapters are. So after the preface and the introduction, I'm going to get into the first chapter, which is called Why is Salon Ownership for You? Second chapter is starting with the end in mind. Chapter three, systems. Chapter four, the numbers. Chapter five, hiring process. Chapter six, career paths. Chapter seven, you only have two hands. Chapter eight, financing and construction. Chapter nine, key relationships. And chapter 10, growth and expansion. And then there's chapter 11, what if you do make it? And then after that, there's going to be some uh, final thoughts. Um, it's bonus material. The final thoughts were things like as soon as I finished writing the book, I had like, hey, what about this? What about that? So I put a little bonus chapter um, in the very end. Um, so let's get into it. We're going to start with uh, the preface. You know, and why I wrote this book, just like I wrote the first one, the reason I wrote Your First Year in Salon Ownership uh, is because after being a salon owner for 10 years, you learn some shit, right? You learn some ways to work things. You learn some ways that things do not work. Um, you learn some stuff. So I know a lot of people, the logical next step in a career path potentially is people start, you know, in school, they get a job as a stylist, you know, and eventually you get to a point where you're thinking, what's next? Well, for me, you know, I got into education, super heavy, heavy, heavy. But after that, you know, thinking beyond education, what's next was salon ownership. You know, so that's kind of what I, you know, decided I was going to make my next uh, venture was becoming an owner. Um, but I wasn't an owner when I became an owner. On paper, I was an owner. Um, but like I was saying, that mentality, that ownership mentality, that's a whole different thing. And so I slowly over years... Um, really became an owner and you'll you know I'll, I'll give you more insight onto that and you'll you'll understand but that ownership mentality is what I've been developing for the last 10 years um, haven't nailed it you know I make mistakes every single day as a salon owner uh, I make mistakes every single day in general um, but definitely I'm learning you know 10 years you know owning a salon owning a company multiple locations I've had salons open I've had salons closed I'm hiring firing you learn a lot about what an owner is. So um, let's get into it. So this is the preface. Here we go again. For those of you that know me, you know two things to be true. I love the beauty industry, number one. And number two, I'm passionate about education. That is why for the second time, I'm sitting down to share what I've learned over the past 10 years as a business owner. Actually, multiple business owner. I'm not saying that to brag, just to be clear. I never thought I could make one business work. So I'm kind of shocked at the position I find myself in. So why this book and why now? I think over the past 10 years, I've accumulated some knowledge on how the beauty business works and how it doesn't work. I've opened salons that are extremely successful, but I've also had salons crash and burn. Through all of that, as as I hear more and more people talk about owning their salons, their own salons, I thought, hey, maybe I can lend a helping hand. 
perhaps my view will encourage some people, but also prevent others from going down the path of salon ownership. Maybe save a few broken hearts and a few broken bank accounts. Anyhow, welcome to your first year in salon ownership and all that comes with it. Until we meet and share some war stories, I'll leave you with this. It's gonna be harder than you think, but if you stick with it, there's no better feeling than that of seeing a business that you've built flourish. I wish you good luck, but let's face it, luck ain't got nothing to do with it. It's hard work, plain and simple. Introduction, September 2008. The hardest and scariest day of my short beauty career had come. I'd made up my mind to quit. Yep, I said it, quit. Something as a United States Marine is a forbidden word and a forbidden action. At this point, I had been working as an instructor at Paul Mitchell School Tampa as the cutting specialist, as well as at a top salon in South Tampa. It had been little over three years, three amazing years, sharing my passion for haircutting with the next generation of students every night and working behind the chair, practicing my craft as a hairstylist every day. I was happy, extremely happy doing both. So why was I going to quit? It really boils down to one thing. I was pissed. I felt like I was a hypocrite. Day after day, year after year, I had been looking into the eyes of my students, preaching to them that once they graduated the salon, once they graduated, the salon job of their dreams was awaiting them all the while knowing that it wasn't true. Sure, there were plenty of salons out there, but as far as ones that knew what to do with our graduates, that number went quickly from plenty to like zero. After helping recruit and hire all of the staff at the salon I was working in, there wasn't any more room. So I watched the school, so as I watched the school go from six students to 16 to 60, I knew there was a huge problem. And it's that word problem that usually is the catalyst of a great business venture. Even though at the time I wasn't planning any great business venture, I wasn't planning any venture period. I was just on the sidelines wondering who was gonna start opening salons to house all of these graduates. The schools were opening what seemed to be like a new school every week. So I knew this couldn't be just a Tampa problem. There was probably a nationwide epidemic. Day after day, as I continued to look my students in the eyes and basically blow hot smoke up their ass, I got more and more pissed. And one day, I came to the realization that the someone who I kept thinking needs to start opening salons for these graduates may never show up. My feelings got even stronger when as a Paul Mitchell educator, I began traveling around the country, visiting other schools and salons, confirming what I had thought. We are in trouble. Some cities I would visit had zero Paul Mitchell salons. So as a Paul Mitchell graduate, that sucks. As a graduate myself, I moved from Orlando to Tampa to get a job in a Paul Mitchell salon, which was only an hour away, and I felt lucky. Dealing with this dilemma became a daily conversation I would have with myself. The question that finally popped into my head was, why don't you do it? Immediately, I squashed that idea. What are you, crazy? You don't know anything about running. You don't know anything about running a salon. You don't know anything about running a business, not a legitimate one anyway, wink, wink. For those of you who have read my first book or have heard my talks, you know about my business resume. It's funny how we as humans operate. As soon as we get an idea in our head, that would challenge us, we immediately began to talk ourselves out of it. I started coming up with reasons every day as to why I was not the person to address this problem. You're just a haircutting teacher. You're a stylist, you're just a stylist. You don't know the first thing about setting up a salon, on and on and on. This went on for months until finally I cracked. I couldn't look one more of my students in the face and lie, so here I was, sitting alone on a lunch shift when I just walked out of the school, got in my car, and drove to the salon to quit my job there. 
after I had that tough conversation, I knew another one was right around the corner with my other boss. I put that one off for a couple of weeks, but after, after it, I had a couple of feelings going through my body. The first was I felt free to now start designing my plan without doing it behind the back of my previous bosses, only to at the last minute quit and go open up a shop. That wasn't cool. That's just asking for bad karma. I believe in a certain code of conduct when it comes to business, which we'll talk about more in a later chapter. The second feeling I had running through my body was, holy shit, what did I just do? I don't have a job. I guess I had no choice but to figure out this, figure this salon business shit out quick. With those fears as my motivators, I set out on a journey like no other. Fast forward 10 years to this present day as I write this, we have five locations and we are on the verge of a nationwide expansion that will result in having the Salon 1.0 locations in every major city in the United States. How's that for figuring this salon business shit out? Do you wanna know how we did it? If the answer is yes, then I guess we're ready to begin. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as I tell you exactly how we did it. All right, so that, my friends, is a little introduction to your first year in salon ownership. Um, this is open for business. You know, right now we are all closed for business. Um, I get excited as I'm just reading through that and thinking about, you know, some of the, the wild ride, you know, that I had and the wild ride that I'm having. I mean, think about it right now. Think about the challenge that's in front of us. If you're a business owner like I am, all your, and all your businesses are shut down, how's that for a wild ride? How's that for a challenge? How's that for you know, shit you got to figure out? Um, so I constantly um, you know, set myself up right, for these kind of challenges because I'm looking for an adventurous life. I'm looking for... A, a problem to solve. You know, I joke around, but it's probably true. If I couldn't, if I didn't have a problem I was working on, a problem to solve, I probably would create one. Um, but that's my mentality. It's not everyone's mentality, but I will tell you this. I don't know anybody who just wants a boring existence, a miserable life. I think everybody wants to have a little bit of variety, a little bit of adventure, a little bit of excitement. Maybe not to the point of having a pandemic shut you down, for a month or two, but I think everybody wants a little variety. Um, so I'm excited to get into these stories and kind of relive them and add to them and you know do some real time editing um, as we go through these. Every morning I'll be coming, we'll do a chapter, um, we'll read through, um, I'll add my insights, add my hot takes, add my thoughts to the moment. Um, so I'll be back at 9 a.m. I think I've got the crazy uh, Facebook streaming more beat for now, um, figuring out a workaround, and I'll be recording these and also posting these videos on my Facebook pages, on my business pages, my personal profile. Um, if you're on Instagram, thanks for hanging out, thanks for joining. Um, if you're on Facebook, whether it's one of the pages or you saw the link, or you're just watching a replay, thanks for being here. Um, I'm doing this live every morning, um, 9 a.m. Eastern time. We'll go for you know about an hour or so. Um, any questions, comments you guys have, you can always hit me up at any time. If you're um, on Instagram, I'm at SunnyD1.0. If you're on Facebook, find me at SunnyD or look for my profile page. Um, if you want to friend me, send me a friend request. It's SunnyDEE -E because I can't just use my initial D. They make you put the two silent E's. Uh, it's a travesty. So... Um, that's just the way it is. Um, so thanks for being here. And then, you know, all of our um, YFY books, you know, the two different ones that are in the series, you can get those. You go to yourfirstyearin.com. Um, I do have a sale going on for the books. Um, it's PMTSFP. A lot of future professionals get on, so I created that code. I'm 20% off of all of the YFY books. And I'm still giving away some of these T-shirts. Um, I've got the YFY limited edition tea. Um, it's free. You just got to pay for shipping. It's like $4.95. Um, you pay for shipping. T-shirt comes to your door. 
you put it on, you take your picture, you represent, you got a limited edition um, iHeart YFYT, it's all yours. Um, the codes for those, I'm sure they're in the post, um, but it's for the women's, it's Storytime W. For the men's shirt, it's Storytime M. So you can grab one of those um, at on my website. You'll see the YFY swag. Um, so that's what I got for today, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging. Um, thanks for being part of Storytime. Looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Um, until then, be great. And I'll talk to you soon. All right, Graham, blow it up. Share this, share this stream with your peeps. Talk to you guys later. And of course, my people on Facebook, it was Facebook. Um, it was actually Zoom, no, Zoom one, sunny zero, after the travesty last night, but I think we got you now. We got it, we worked it around. I've been, I've been watching, you know, I've been paying attention. We've been on Facebook 40 minutes. Last night we couldn't get it to stay for more than four minutes, but we figured it out. So I'm excited about that. Um, so I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Uh, thanks for hanging out.